Hey, welcome to another great episode of Get in the Flow, where we are kicking your assets in gear. I'm the architect. It's Doc. Yeah, right on, Doc. Who we got with us today? We have one of our good friends, Ben McCann from Catalyst Technologies. We got a little bit of background with Ben and season eight of The Block Show. So we know him. We love him. But we want our audience to get to know him a little bit better, too. He has an insanely dynamic background, finance, tech sector, and he actually is a recent first-time business seller. So we want to get into that a little bit too. Um, but Ben, we are just honored to have you, man. We want you to just press in right off the bat, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and then business in general. Well, awesome. Yeah, dude, it was good seeing you guys. This is the first time I think we've really talked since the blocks taping yeah. and it was exciting to be on there with you. Uh, yeah, my name's Ben. I'm a I'm a catalyst. That's what I am. Um, I was described as a catalyst for growth for CBMC Indiana, which is uh, connecting businessmen to Christ. It's a men's ministry. And when I went out on my own, I decided to adopt that name. And it's uh, L-I-S-T instead of L-Y-S-T. And there's a reason behind that as well. But uh, uh, I digress. Yeah. So I, you know, my background, it was I went to school for architectural engineering um, and got a job uh, building uh, component uh, engineering drawings for uh, home builders and um, small commercial like residential multifamily uh, homes. And then uh, got a opportunity to go work for the phone company as a lineman, did that for a few years, went through Dave Ramsey's financial piece uh, at my church. I dumped a bunch of debt and I was like, I want to go do that. So I spent 16 <laughs> years in the financial services industry because I wanted to you know, teach people things that I never taught. And I started out in individual health insurance, got into Medicare, retirement planning, did group benefits, and that got into HR benefits, payroll consulting, all kinds of stuff. Never lost my tech side of things. Kept doing that, added technology to it. And then Obamacare kind of destroyed the industry and I got sick and tired of starting over. So I decided I was going to take my hobby, which had been the um, smart home technology, audio visual stuff, security, and turn that into a business. And so that's when I started uh, Catalyst uh, Technology Integrators, where you technology and security. Uh, so the smart home automation is built on a security platform. Um, we are an alarm.com dealer. We are the number one ring dealer in Indiana. We're a direct dealer for Samsung, Denon, Sonos. Uh, we're, we have about 10,000 products we're a direct dealer for. And uh, during that time, I also did a lot of work with a lot of nonprofits. Um, built a social network, a couple of different social networking platforms that did a whole bunch of different things. One of the nonprofits was helping churches connect, network and respond and prepare for disasters. Been doing that for 15 years. Uh, so recent tornadoes have reactivated uh, that calling. And so, yeah, I've just been a Involved in the community, um, I believe I built business through relationships, relationships over everything. I even got it on my shirt. Um, a part of an organization called Synergize is relationships over everything. So yes. um, they are a, a relationship organization that just really focuses on building uh, relationships and going deeper. It's not that surface level chamber of commerce kind of, what do you do? What's your business card? Uh, oh, can, you, <laughs> can, you, can I sell to you or? You know, but for me, you know, it's, it's deeper than that. So um, that kind of fits with who I am. I'm definitely a relational person. Uh, high I on the disc profile. Of, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, secondary D, and I'm also high C. So I'm, I'm creative. Um, I, I'm a people person, uh, smart, funny, uh, always on the go, always doing something, never a dull moment with me. So, so yeah, that's kind of a high level overview. Uh, I'm trained in uh, Commando Krav Maga. We did trainings and integrated fighting systems. I've helped facilitate uh, stuff with different military, or just all kinds of stuff. It's it's a lot of fun. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just a little, so, just a little sec. So you're going to leave people in stitches one way or another. You're either gonna Possibly, laugh, yeah. That's or you're going to break them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. That's, that. that's amazing. And now it's kind of coming around uh, why I see such good product on all your social media. So <laughs> we can get into that later on, but that makes so much more sense. Though. That makes so much more sense. You were just so talented, dude. Right. I love it. <laughs> so, so yeah, 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 you get into the next one. All right. So um, like, I know some recent changes have happened with your business. And so what's the biggest thing that you're working on right now in your business? 
So um, when I came back from the blocks, I realized I needed to hire an executive because I didn't, I didn't need to be bogged down with the management of the company, et cetera. And uh, I started talking to some of my friends and, and referral partners. And one of them was Tech 365. And I was talking with Brandon. He's like, well, why don't I just buy your company and then you come work for me and you help and then you could be our VP of business development operations and we can grow both Tech 365 and Catalyst. And, and so I was like, all right, well, what's that look like? So we started walking through that, um, you know, the, the acquisition and the merger. And so we're still working through that right now. So that's kind of the biggest change that's happened. And he just had, an, his wife just had an emergency C-section last, last week, six weeks early, premature baby. And so he spent a week in the hospital. The baby hopefully comes home tomorrow. But uh, that's a painful way to grow a company is through childbirth. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's added to the, you know, everything's changing around here. And I just sold my house. I, li- uh, I got reached out to you by a realtor. He's like, we need somebody wants to buy your house. I just remodeled it, spent two years making it look great. Um, and then they were like, it made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So uh, wow. sold my company, sold my house, uh, wrecked two vehicles in the last, well, one engine blue and the other vehicle. And so I'm down to like a motorcycle and then tech, you know, working out of the company vehicle right now, but there's a lot of changes in my life right now, but nothing's constant, but change. And if you look at the catalyst logo, you know, my, it's got the Delta in the center and all the moving parts is there's always change. Change is inevitable. It's how you handle that change and make it work uh, to, you know, moving forward. So um, I'm always, I'm always, you know, moving, keeping stuff going. Right, Holy cow, man, that is awesome. I love that. Nothing is constant except change. That's huge. That's huge. Um, I want to, you know, I, I think that there's definitely some people listening that might want to get into a little bit more details of at least like starting what it looks like to sell your company or to partner up with people like this. This sounds like an amazing guy that you you partnered with or that's kind of acquiring you. And what did that look like? Again, probably relationships were a big dynamic, but. Well, yeah. so we did have an existing relationship, a referral relationship for a couple of years where we had some areas that overlapped, uh, access controls, IP cameras, uh, Wi-Fi technology, uh, phone systems. And so those were things that we kind of both had experience and overlapped in. And so we would refer each other business. And so, um, but they're all B2B and I was B2B and B2C. So mm-hmm. if anybody knows, do I need to explain what that is? Or if you wouldn't mind, yeah, you wouldn't mind. So B to C is business to consumer, and then B to B is business to business. So his business is all 100% business to business, and I had done both. My company worked with both businesses and consumers, and so uh, adding that business to consumer portion kind of helps us provide a whole suite of services, especially to executives that work from home and people that don't realize, you know, their Tech 365 is more of an IT security. They're more IT products, so. Um, most people don't realize is if you start an LLC or if you have an S corp or whatever, as an officer of that company, you've limited your liability to uh, your personal assets can't be sued if your company gets sued. Well, that is not the case in the event of a uh, security or data breach. Uh, So if you are responsible for cybersecurity uh, for your business, well, if you have a house and you work from home and your kids have access to your network with all their tablets and game systems and this and that, or you're using your personal disk and that security threat, uh, that cybersecurity threat comes breaches your company through your residential home uh, networking, your, you know, through through that, through stuff that's came through, you know, a, a weakness in your home's network, then you're personally liable uh, for that. And a lot of people don't know that. And so protecting that through a really robust um, home IT security, as well as, you know, the physical security, but then, you know, um, uh, insurance is another way to also protect against that. But we prefer, prefer to not have to use insurance. So we prefer to have just good systems in place that can identify and detect threats before they become real, whether they're cyber threats. And then, of course, personal threats, whether, you know, it's a uh, you know, a criminal trying to break in or whatever um, through their digital or physically. We, we kind of try to cover everything um, from a security standpoint. 
Wow. Holy cow, man. Wow. That's dynamic. Jeez. Okay. That's the yeah. First so, thing you know, you try to break into my computer, yet you're not going to get through. Try to break into my house. I practice Ching Pao as well. So, <laughs> Ching Pao. So, like, I, like I said, man, you're going to leave me with stitches. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. Ching Pao is a little, a little heavier, but I love it. I love it. To say. I mean, we got or, these guns too, bro. We got these guns too. We can, we can work there. Well, man, so this is actually kind of a really good segue because. Um, I know that you are really big into social media, building trust, building relationships, and um, you're building your brand through intentional word of mouth. Yeah. Your, your humor mm -hmm. and your business acumen kind of come together. So let's transition that and bring them together. So one of my favorite books is Patrick Lencioni's Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Yeah. And so I love that. It's, you know, and then also, you know, Einstein's theory of relativity relationships are built on trust of character, competence, chemistry, and ability to communicate. And you get to a level where you can resolve conflict in a way that builds up and doesn't tear down the relationship. And you get to a level of commitment, which says, this is the cause we're fighting for. And these are the people that I want alongside me. And we're gonna do this, whether they are internal connections or whether it's external referral partners, or it's a family unit or a church or whatever, it's all based on relationships that are built on trust. And so, and which says, you know, these are the goals achieved and together if we can uh, hold each other accountable with words and actions, which accountability is a two way street. Um, it's not harsh or authoritative, then we can achieve goals effectively. And so I really kind of taken that to heart and made that the crux of how I built my business as relational, relational, relational. People do business with people, not companies. Companies right. will come and go, well, but yeah. I was able to transition from 16 years in financial services into the technology sector without skipping a beat because I built relationships with people. My customers that have hired me to, whether it was their retirement or their insurance or life insurance or whatever, the same ones that hired me to do their technology because I built that relationship and they trust me, my character, my competence, my chemistry, my ability to communicate with them. So, yeah. Wow. Holy cow. That's, that's humongous. I think that's one thing that, again, for us starting off, you know, fresh and newer with Flowbester, that's something that we can kind of take to heart humongously is building up that community. People getting to know us, getting to love us, of us loving them and, and do that. That's like right down my alley. I absolutely am fascinated yeah. humongously by that. So um, I guess what kind of my, my mind, I was always like looking forward and like futuristic what does that look like for you moving forward? Are there any big like dreams that you have with the company? Are you guys just kind of solidifying processes, obviously with the acquisition? What's big that, that you're thinking? So uh, as uh, iron sharpens, iron sparks fly. So yeah. definitely <laughs> okay. you know, we're two heads and sometimes we're trying to like, you know, make stuff work. And so we pushed each other to be more effective, more efficient, so we can be more scalable um, so that some of the processes that were in place on the B2B side can be implemented on the B2C side. It's a different business model. Um, right. And so we're, we're really focused on refining some of that and positioning ourselves for scalable growth, uh, which means hopefully in the next two or three months, pulling me out of the field altogether and to be more strategic on operations and business development, where we'll be hiring additional uh, technicians, additional office personnel, addi additional uh, people and, and building more strategic relationship with other vendor partners so that we can meet the needs of our clients that are ever changing, ever growing. And like I said before, nothing's constant, but change. And we have to be Semper Gumby, always flexible. So we are, we are consistently, um, you know, kind of looking at, you know, how can we better serve our clients and, and we're not stuck in it. This is the way we've always done it. So we can't change. You got to be willing to, Changes sometimes the you know the the the, ch the pain of not doing anything has to be greater than the pain of change in order for people to be willing to do it. And we've got to help them paint that picture and tell the story. And so we've got enough stories to tell from our customers that we have had, so we can kind of paint the picture for our existing customers. And then it's it's up to them to decide. And a lot of times it's not about building business. Um, you know, relationship. It's not about if they're doing business with us. It's how much business and what businesses are are we getting with you today. Um, because we have, I personally built a strategic word of mouth marketing plan through building relationships and having good content on social media, being able to relate with people because technology can be confusing. Technology is something yeah. that um, a lot of people struggle with and how everything integrates together. And so we've got to be able to speak everyday 
language and take some things that are highly technical and break it down to the everyday people's level. Even with companies and even with business people, they may be very savvy and with one application and then a whole other language dealing with another. And so, you know, trying to bridge that gap, the knowledge gap, the experience gap, the age gap, the, you know, your Gen X, your, your millennials, all these different people kind of working in the same workforce. How do we make that all work together so that um, the goals are achieved of the company and individuals as well. Right. Wow. Well, that was, it. that was a, you just dropped it right there, didn't you? I know, I love it. <laughs> so, so much line, knowledge, dude. dude. So much knowledge. Yeah. That's awesome. So when you're talking about like, um, you've got, you've got a highly technical, literally type of business, mm -hmm. but which is scary to people. Yeah. So in building trust and, and whatnot, how are you using social media? You talked about building like good social media content. How do you use that to break that down and help establish that trust? Well, I like to document the process. I like to show people the inside world of, hey, this is what's going on. This is what we do. And kind of like show them that and be real and authentic. You don't have to have like professional camera footage and all that. You can just use your cell phone and and put content out there on a regular basis that's short, sweet, to the point, tells a story, shows you're a real person and, and relate it to what you're doing. And and I always do this, like it's like a one to four, one to five at most business to personal posts. Like you can have our company pages and that should be curated to corporate content, but people still do business with people. So your personal social media, your personal brand is going to be what builds people's trust. And it's not going to be your business page. Uh, it's not going to. So what you have to do is you can't just be out there always posting everything about your business all the time. You got to be able to show that you're a real human being. That I like to ride motorcycles. I like to shoot guns. I like to train. I like kittens. I like memes. <laughs> so you know, I, I love I love memes. So I've got a good meme game. My last three girlfriends came from my memes. So right on Facebook, they're like, "I like your memes. Let's meet up." So uh, uh, they all they didn't end that well, but you know, they were amazing, fiery, fun relationships. But I, I've got a good you know, I have have a good sense of humor. Have good memes. Uh, and, you know, communicate, you know, you'll go have conversations with people. Don't always just be trying to send links to your website and try to always talking about business. I had a guy contact me the other day and he was, he was, he just totally didn't get it. And I was like, bro, you need to go read the tipping point by Malcolm Gladwell. There you go. And you need to use the go giver by Bob Bird. Those two come books, on. go read those, come back and talk to me. Cause he was literally trying to just leverage my network for his personal business benefit. And he was asking of me to do something for him and he hadn't built a relationship with me yet. And he just wanted to push product on people. And I'm like, no, bro, you don't get it. You totally don't get it. Right. It's about relationships. It's not about pushing product. If you have right. value wow. and you're consistent, you're gonna be out there. So I had an old, an old, old, he's since passed away, an old mentor, World War II vet. And he told me this is, it comes out, marketing is simple. Publicity, advertising, contact work. Publicity is anything, it's free, don't cost you nothing. And even bad publicity can be good. Uh, but it leads to visibility, which leads to credibility, which is a profitability. So the more that you're visible and social media gives us a tool where we can leverage our time and, that, and create a pathway for people to be visible. So that visibility is gonna make you credible. When they say, oh, I think I've heard of your company. I've heard of Catalyst, yeah, I've heard of you guys. There have been people that had seen my videos and seen my posts for months and months and months, never interacted, never engaged, whatever. Six months later, they call me because they want me to do, they, they're, they're ready to buy now. And so that consistent visibility didn't cost me other than a few minutes here and telling my story. And then over time, that visibility, now I'm like, when, when people go on to the local chat pages and somebody has a question about, does anybody know somebody that does whatever it is, I get tagged by five people by to every one of the other guy that gets tagged in there. And then by the time I respond and get on there, yeah, here's our Facebook page. Here's our, here's what we do. Happy to call me, send them a message, blah, blah, blah. I get the business almost 100% of the time. The other guys, it doesn't matter if they're doing it for free or for beer or for pizza. They'd rather pay me a few hundred dollars because they know they're getting a pro than their buddy that says they'll do it for a beer and a pizza um, right. you know, with their $3,000 TV or whatever it is. So, you know what I mean? It's like, and they're willing to pay for quality and service. So, you know, having that raving fans, building raving fans, that customer experience is huge. So not only can you be have great, but you have to deliver that experience that you do it in such a way that 
the customers love the experience of doing business with you that they have to tell other people about it. And I think that's important, no matter what business that you're in, is making sure that you are guiding people through the process of not just sales and buying and purchasing, but follow through and follow up. And we talk about that on the blocks and, and they'll use different language, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to the customer experience and how do they flow through your channel and your pipeline, right? Social media is just one avenue of people coming into your pipeline, but you also have you know, search engine optimization and marketing, and you have, you know, cold leads and stuff that comes in, you got to nurture those people and bring them through the process and build that relationship with them. I mean, people see me out in public all the time. They're like, hey, Ben, and I'm like, hey, I have no idea who they are, right. you know, but they feel like they know me. They feel like they know me and they do. Right. They know a lot about me because I'm pretty public and I, and I, and I try to be authentic on social media. And sometimes I just tell them, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm part of me, my brain, you know, Blaming on the Rona, the whatever. I, I oh, what was your name again? I'm sorry. And they're like, they're like, oh yeah. And then I do remember them. Most times I do. Sometimes I still have no clue, but uh, but most of the time it reengages. Oh yeah, we talk, and your kid does this, and so you know, authentically, when they post a picture of their dog or their kid graduating high school or whatever, like it, comment it. it does take, don't take a lot of time, but when you see people, good things in life going on make sure that you engage with them. Uh, don't just have just have one way communication going out there and that's just you pushing content out, but engage with people on their stuff as well, on their personal stuff. And when, they're, when they get married, when they, when they grad, your kid graduates school with their achievements, engage with that. It doesn't take a lot. That's awesome. Congratulations, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't take a lot. And they, you will be top of mind and you will help the algorithms keep you relevant uh, when, when they're looking for you. Right. Holy cow, man. That is, man, I got slapped by that. Me personally, I'm not doing any posts again, because I've always had it in my mind of, I don't like to do the personal stuff. You know, like I'm, I'm always kind of pulled away. I like that to direct, shake a hand, have coffee, but, but still it's, it's all encompassing. And so dude, that, that you can fun. shake a lot of digital hands and have a, some digital coffee. The memes are a version of having coffee with somebody right. sharing a meme. That's that's <laughs> that you know. Hey, here's a meme. You can you know. And so you know, having that conversation around the time, and it doesn't have to be take forever. It's short, sweet, to the point. But engaging with people on their content is just as important as having engagement on your content. And having and I, I make it a point. Anytime somebody likes or comments on my stuff. I always have a comment back, right? I always have at least one response, one reply that I acknowledged that you liked my stuff and always, and sometimes that starts other conversations. So, you know, yeah. let, you know, don't just be like, take those likes for granted. I mean, I don't look good enough. I don't have, um, I don't have breastuses and things that I can, I don't do the duck lips and I don't have like, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not an Instagram model. I'm not a, I'm not an influencer that makes my money by posting pictures of my TikTok videos and my butt. Like right. I don't have that. I don't have that asset. Right. So I gotta make sure that my that that I'm I'm getting people's attention and in a different way and right. in a way that you know is professional, but still showing that you know. And I have you know humor, and sometimes I I try to make keep it clean and not blur the line because I've been I've been deleted off social media. My Facebook account that I had for 15 years, they banned me. They right. kicked me off. And I lost 90% of my business overnight. I had to rebuild four years ago. I think three years ago, two years ago. I don't remember. It was a long time. And I right. lost, I had multiple business pages that I managed that didn't have additional um admins and I lost access to those pages. So I lost yeah. so, so you need it if you're going to be online. You need to control, you need to, you just got to be careful what you put out there. But so right. don't, you know, on your personal stuff, you know, it's okay to be able to, like, I'm a person of faith, um, but it's okay to be able to share some things. But there's a lot of stuff that crosses, you know, there's just politics, man, stay away from it. Stay yeah. away from, you know, you can have conversations, but don't get too crazy privately talk with people about stuff but right. there's so many people like it just turns people off when they see all the blah that's out there and like didn't matter who you vote for this or that like i have my personal convictions and beliefs and i and i do think that we need to but the social media is owned by private companies and their private that's companies right. are suppressing yeah. speech left and right so mm -hmm. keep it light keep it fun uh keep it engaging it doesn't mean you can't hot talk about serious stuff either you know i've made posts out there that are pretty authentic that talk about mental health and talk about 
um, you know, um, abuse and suicide and stuff like that. You can have those conversations, but, you know, have more of the fun stuff than the serious right. stuff. And right. have that balance, like three to one, four to one, five to one, um, because, um, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to, you don't want to have some type, you know, the energy that you're putting out there, you want to make sure that it's getting the results that you want. There you go. We're going to, we're going to have you back. Are we good now? For sure. Because this is, this has been such a rich conversation and, and we're just, unfortunately we're out of time and I know we could go for another hour. I mean, yeah, this we, is, could. we do need to, we do need to, uh, we do need to circle back and just connect. Yes. And stay yeah, connected. because There's definitely a lot of really great things going on. So we, Ben, we appreciate you coming on. I mean, you dropped some, you drop some, you drop some gold on us today. Yes, we man. Appreciate we it. really want to just at least finalize it where people can get a hold of you. Yep. Uh, what that looks like, because there's going to be tons. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, I, my cell phone, 317-441-4321. Again, 317-441-4321. That's my phone number. I've had yes. it for years. It's a great number. And then um, <laughs> my website is catalysttechnology.com, C-A-T-A-L-I-S-T, technology.com. And then the other website, that, which is our parent company, which is tech365, T-E-C-H 365.support, tech365.support. Those are uh, the two ways where you kind of go check us out. And then there's links to our social media on there. You can go see some of our content, engage with me personally at Catalyst4182 on uh, Twitter and Instagram and uh, C-A-T-A-L-I-S-T. And then our Instagram is Catalyst Tech, Catalyst Tech. Awesome, dude. Thank well, you we will so definitely, much. I mean, I'll just, yeah, I this I is know. our in-studio applause. <laughs> dude, we will we definitely, one. so you guys, if, if you're watching, man, you, if you're looking for any of the services and stuff that Ben's talked about today, make sure that you click on any, any of these links, call him, yep. uh, just call him for coffee. Cause he loves hanging out and having a relationship. So amazing guy. Amazing um, guy. yeah, we are truly blessed to have you on the show. We appreciate you. We're definitely want to invite you back. You know. Um, this has been, this has been phenomenal. So, um, guys, it has been, it has been phenomenal. Make sure you subscribe below, check out our videos. You know, check out the Facebook page. Uh, we're we're just we're grateful for every last one of you. Yep. And um, yeah. I think that's I think that's, that's right. pretty much a right. guys. It has been another great episode. Uh, that's that's it. That's it. That's a little crowd going on. <laughs> it's over. It's over. It's been another awesome. But Mac McClellan doing the doing the. It's over. At, you know. You know. Throwing back to the, <laughs> the Toronto <laughs> Raptors. It's over. <laughs> Done. All right, guys, it's been another great episode of Get in the Flow, and uh, we're kicking your assets in gear. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Thanks, guys, and thanks, man. See you, guys.